Okay. <clears throat> that's setting that up there. Fantastic. Good stuff. All right. <clears throat> hey, Brian. Hey, David. There's, there's another Brian out there as well. <laughs> oh, another so, Brian. Huh? Yeah, that's right. So that might be Brian Long, my buddy Brian Long. Um, all right. We are live on Facebook as well. So, hey, welcome to um, Cold Springs Conversations with uh, Pastor David. I'm the lead pastor of Cold Springs Church here in Placerville, and I'm so glad that you're joining us in Placerville, California. And Cold Springs Conversations is about creating some conversations about important things in our community, in our world, and obviously the things that are going on with the coronavirus, the COVID-19, um, are impacting all of us in significant ways, and we've been focusing on how do we get beyond just thriving or surviving and, and uh, live in a thriving way? Um, and having these conversations with some awesome and amazing people. And we have them every Thursday night at 630. And we're inviting people from our church and our community and around the world to join us as we talk about how do we just uh, get beyond just surviving in these times, but living to thrive, even as we wrestle with some really very difficult and challenging issues. So tonight, I am very grateful to have Don Ashton, who is the Chief Administrative Officer for El Dorado County. Um, apparently, I think we took, Don, we took your um, bio from the website and it actually hadn't been updated that you were the Chief Administrative Officer and one of your team emailed me, who I know, and said, hey, you might want to correct this. So just so you know, he is the Chief Administrative Hello. Officer for El Dorado County. You got people watching out for you, Don, watching your back. And then uh, Brian Veerkamp, who is the District 3 Supervisor for El Dorado County. Um, they're joining me as we talk about moving forward as a community. How can we do that? And how are we doing that? What's happening within our county, within our community? Um, and we've been talking about things that have been impacting our lives and how we can best respond as people of faith. And uh, so, Don and Brian, if you just give a, an introduction to yourself tonight, a little bit about who you are. Um, and, um, and what your um, favorite sport is that you're missing uh, playing or watching at this point in your life. How's that? We'll go with that. So Don, why don't, we, why don't you start with you? Favorite sport that I'm missing and, and playing and watching is basketball for uh, sure. That time yeah. of year. And, and it's not there. It is uh, not there. <laughs> what was the first part of the question, Dave? I was uh, introduce yourself a little bit about who who are you and uh, what makes Don Ashton Don Ashton. Yeah, so I um, yeah Don Ashton, the chief administrative officer. I've been in this role for four years now with El Dorado County. Moved up to El Dorado County in 2011. I spent most of my life in Southern California, but met met a girl and she lived up here, and I decided to relocate to Northern California. It's and it, it it's it's been great. Um, I have three boys. Uh, we do foster care. We, we're about to get our third foster child in the next couple of weeks. So that's that's what we do. And that keep between work and that and our kids, it keeps us very busy. And it's all great. Fantastic. So how many foster kids do you have right now? We have none right now. We've had we've had two. They're both grown now. Uh -huh. And great. we're in line to get our th uh, third um, in the next week or two. Great, great. Um, yeah, we've I've done that and do that as well. So I know that journey and uh, that's, that is an amazing ministry. That's a, a that's awesome. So great. Thanks, Don. Brian, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us, uh, you know, what sport you're missing, uh, uh, playing or watching or being involved in and um, what makes Brian, Brian? Well, David, thank you very much. And uh, what Don didn't say about both of us is we both probably wish we could still throw a leg over a motorcycle. It's true. But, uh, <laughs> as they get taller and we get shorter, it's harder to get that leg over that thing and ride off road like we used to do. But that's one thing that we, we probably both miss and not because of the COVID that's, but just because we're probably smart and don't do it. <laughs> but well, uh, I hope that I never get that smart as you guys. I just, so you know, man, I've, I've gotten on my motorcycle and it's the perfect time to be riding the motorcycle. Just so you know. Oh boy, for sure. But anyway, thanks for the introduction, David. And, uh, currently the chair of the El Dorado County Board of Supervisors, uh, you, you pointed out District 3 rep. Um, I'm my last year of a second term and I'm turned at, termed out, which would mean I'd have to sit out four years before I could contemplate running again. I'm a lifelong resident of El Dorado County uh, and being blessed in my 40th year of marriage to my beautiful wife, Lori. A couple daughters, both of them raised three grandchildren 
And uh, David, you married the youngest daughter here last fall that we're so grateful for. And, uh, and it was a great ceremony. Yeah. Let me let's just be clear on that, that I actually did not marry Rochelle. I performed uh, the ceremony where Rochelle okay. was right. married to Andrew. Let, let's, we want to, you know, this is out there on Facebook and, you know, things can get misconstrued. So let, we want to be clear on that one. So yeah, Pam, Pam might have a little fit. Right? <laughs> or that'll, that'll be the rumor tomorrow. going on. Yeah. No, uh, anyway, we're forever grateful, David, for that. It was a beautiful ceremony. I uh, retired after 32 years in uh, fire and emergency services, a great, great career. Uh, I, I love obviously serving the community and I'm a member of the Kiwanis Club of Placerville, um, part of Marshall Hospital as well as their, on their board and the foundation board. Also uh, Eldorado County Community Foundation Board. So a lot of fun having there. Yeah. You know me, I love to love our county and I love providing service to our residents. And, uh, you know, I love all sorts of outdoor sports. You know, I'm a hunter. And yeah. a fisher, I believe you either grow it, fish it, or hunt it. Um, yeah. Other than that, you know, I guess you go get it at the store. But during <laughs> this COVID thing, my freezer is full and the garden's growing, and you That's know, people great. need to be self reliant. But I'll I'll stop right there. But just thanks <laughs> for the opportunity to to be with you tonight. Great. Well, thanks guys for being um, <clears throat> on this tonight in our conversation and really is designed to be a conversation um, and that those of you who are um, participating with us either on Zoom or on Facebook Live, uh, if you have some questions um, that you would like to throw out tonight, you can use on Zoom the question and answer feature. And um, also you can um, use the Facebook comment feature and we have people that are monitoring that, um, helping me out here because um, I have a limited ability to focus in my <laughs> life. That's been a lifelong challenge. So um, if your question isn't uh, responded to, you can blame me and my monkey brain that goes on there. So, um, well, obviously, you know, nationwide, worldwide, we're in, in this um, response to the COVID-19 virus. Um, but I want to focus in here on us and our county um, and just sort of starting out with this question of what have been the greatest challenges for our county over the past couple of months that you've had to, to deal with and work with? So you want both of us or you want one of us? Yeah, both, both of you. You both of them um, can, can pipe in. So All right, I, I'll start just quickly, and I think Don will probably agree. I don't think we've faced them yet, David. I mean, obviously, we're facing the health issue. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've had very small numbers, thank God. Yeah. Uh, we've had no deaths, and again, thank God for that. Um, and yet, we've had to make some major restrictions on people's everyday normalcy, if, uh, if you want to that. And I think yet to come is the is the ashes if you want to say it from what we're experiencing now um in the fire yeah and, uh, th and this is a fire that we have you know of of, of, of a huge magnitude you know, my background obviously fire and emergency services i i don't think we're going to have the fallout of any major fire that we've seen before right. that we're going to mm -hmm. see out of this and i think big don would uh, concur with that just because of the major change in people's lives mm -hmm. and the inability to continue the economy, yeah. which is going to have a lasting effect for quite some time. So, Don, yeah. Don, how about you? What do you? What have you seen? Yeah, over the past couple of months, I mean, for, from my role as the chief administrative officer, it's it's being able to answer questions from the public clearly, concisely, consistently. Mm -hmm. You know, writing laws or writing policy is always the easy part. Implementing those is the hard part. And we get new orders and new rules from the governor daily mm. and we can't keep up. Mm -hmm. and, and then we live in a, we live in a county that has two cities with their governing boards, governing bodies that have their ideas. Mm -hmm. if you go up to the south side of Lake Tahoe, which is Eldorado County, but then you have a state that they're doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. The confusion to the public is is off the charts mm -hmm. and it seems like no matter how hard we try we can't get out in front of that uh -huh. and it causes frustration for everybody yeah and I'm, unfortunately i don't see that changing mm -hmm. uh, so
soon. There were two more executive orders issued today. Yeah. That we're now having to figure out how to, how to implement. Mm -hmm. um, and then going forward, it's, it's really I completely agree with Supervisor Veerkamp. My way of saying it, our budgets and the services counties provide, everything's at risk right now. Hmm. The state of California projected, they're projecting a $54 billion budget deficit this yeah. fiscal year. Hmm. Uh, 90 days ago, they were projecting a $6 billion surplus. And, 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 and people ask, what does that mean? And we just don't know yet. There's right. so many problems. Yeah, that, you know, that, that statement right there, <laughs> we don't know yet, is probably one of the greatest challenges that we face, isn't it? That there's just so much uncertainty that, that is going on, um, that's going on with this. You know, I know um, uh, I'm on one of the task forces or working in a couple of task forces um, that, Don, that you've created as a way to bring collaboration. What do you, what are you seeing as far as how our community is responding in a spirit of collaboration and working together in response to this? What, what has encouraged you in that? Just, just that the the collaboration from all all sectors. I'm I'm on the phone daily with different faith based groups. I'm on the phone multiple times a day with the city managers. Um, today I've been on the phone with Barton, the CEO of Barton Hospital, three times with Marshall Hospital twice. The nonprofit community, um, our our business chambers, the, the Office of Education. Everyone is really coming together to try to figure this out. And there's, you know, we frustrate each other sometimes and we don't agree on things sometimes, mm -hmm. but everyone has a common goal in sight. And that's, mm -hmm. to, that's to get our economy open, but do it safely for our community. Um, get churches back in business or back open, all those things. Everyone has that same goal. How do we get there? How hard do we push the governor? You know, we just, do we just not adhere to his orders that some jurisdictions have chosen to do that? Yeah. Um, we haven't, but everyone truly is working as a team to achieve that common goal, which makes it fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Brian, how are, how are you seeing it from your perspective on the board of supervisors and just a long-term, you know, community member, you're, you've, you're connected into a number of, of groups and obviously, you, you know a number of people um, throughout the Western Slope and Tahoe region. What, what are you seeing as far as people working together? Well, it's been, it's been very collaborative. <clears throat> I, I fear their patience is running thin on some, some ends and I can't blame them. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, know, uh, you couldn't ask more of our folks and they've, they've done a great job. You know, our, a lot of our people are very common sensey, which is great because that's what really helps you get through these sorts of things. Uh, you know, if you're sick, you stay home. D duh. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, don't don't you know don't go out and spread a contamination. Wash your hands. I mean, that's it's just common sense stuff. But the collaboration's been great. You know, listening to what Don did today, I we hopefully the board stays out of his way. He's got <laughs> plenty to do. You know, we're policymakers, and when he needs that, that's where we'll step in. It'd be real easy for me, with especially the background that I had to uh, you know, want to get in the middle of this operation, but that's what we've got Don for and, and his team, and they've done an outstanding job. You talk about the people doing a good job, the staff of the county, which have had to redefine their roles mm -hmm. and where they work from and everything has been outstanding. And uh, you know, it's, it's not over yet, and we'll be working on how to you know, reintegrate some of the things. And you know, there's a lot of good will come out of this. There's gonna be a lot of new things we'll do that probably make a lot more sense help us reduce our vehicle miles traveled and some of these things by telecommuting and so forth. So, you know, outstanding collaboration, obviously, David, you know, it. every time a door closes, another one opens, right. I think there's going to be lots of possible open doors here and opportunity to redefine how things are done. And, uh, you know, as I told you a little earlier, I, I really have concern about uh, the social ability of folks because we're, we're social animals. And uh, I think already with all the technology, the kids have a hard time interacting and socializing and now we've just separated everybody for a long period of time and and I don't think that part of it's completely over yet but 
yeah uh, we've we've just been blessed with the spirit of cooperation and we you know we're going to do our best special meeting tomorrow to, to, to attempt to move within the governor's framework to, to start opening these and things up and uh, again yeah. on good facts and mm -hmm. uh, with the health officers concurrence so mm -hmm. yeah yeah, you know, I, I would uh, just really affirm that what you said, Brian, about Don, about your leadership in this and just um, the different um, teams that have, you know, task forces that have been created and creating that structure where people have an opportunity to collaborate. And I know that we've, uh, with the Marshall Foundation for Community Health and being a part of that board, that there's just been, you know, more, you know, people coming together. Um, and uh, so that's been, that's definitely been a positive, I think. And, um, and I also firm with you, Brian, people are getting anxious, right? They're, they're, the longer this goes on, the harder it, um, it harder it, it is on each, uh, on each other. Um, Jonathan asked a question here, once authorized for sit down service, would the county or city governments allow restaurants to use public space like sidewalks, parking lots, or streets to safely increase capacity. What do you think on that? Any uh, response? Go, go ahead, Don. I know you guys are probably chatting about that to some degree. I don't think we're there yet, but uh, go ahead, Don. Yeah, we, we aren't there yet, but I, I think all those things have to be, are, are on the table for consideration, especially if the governor's guidelines, which we hope to get on Tuesday for restaurants, if they put in their if he puts in their requirements that they're talking about about fifty percent seating capacity, you know, restaurants are barely profitable at one hundred percent seating capacity. How does that work at fifty percent? So we're going to have to find ways to basic basically expand their footprint. Now, what is that going to look like? It will look a lot different. I, I think if you go down to Main Street. You could, I don't know what the city will do, but you could close Main Street and have it for just pedestrian traffic and have tables and things out there. That might look different to a restaurant that's on Missouri Flat, but we're going to have to explore those opportunities. And I hope there will be some loosening of some of the laws from the state and the health and safety code about serving and preparing food outside and, and things like that. Um, it's going to look different. And I would hope the policymakers would be interested in hearing those ideas and I, I think they will yeah yep. yeah, I, yeah I think it, it becomes an opportunity for creativity right you know um necessity is a mother of invention type, type of idea and um we all know that california is not um, um likes to make rules i'll just put it at that um, <laughs> so um how do you uh, but how do you create a viable community that um, that people can um, survive number one but move beyond that is is really critical um, Andy Nevis I think we all know Andy um, but um, he says thanks to you both uh, one of the things that has disappointed me is that our nation remains bitterly divided even during this crisis what can local political and community leaders do to help restore a unity of common purpose so how can, and I think that's a great question of how can, um, I, I think we've talked about that, that I see this collaboration, people working together within, within the county, um, but what can we all do to contribute to a sense of unity and common concern that's gonna encourage each other? Well, I, I, David, I'm pretty simple when it comes to that. And, and I believe we follow the golden rules. We treat people with respect and we, you know, I'm going to speak now as an elected. This has never been about me being elected or a politician. I don't like politics. We need to serve people. We need to take care of their needs. And, uh, and, and, and part of that also is teaching people to be self-reliant. This whole process has got a lot of that in it for those that are willing to pick it up and run with it. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think we're going to see the government's not going to be able to continue some of these programs. Um, we're, we're, you know, adding up trillions of dollars of debt every day, and it's going to be very difficult to recover from. And we're all going to need to do our best to, to uh, take care of ourselves. And, uh, you know, to, to me, that's, 
the more governments, then the more problems that we have. And mm-hmm. I've never been one to, to really support that high level. And, you know, unfortunately, our political system has become where it's a, a career, a job, and a, and they've lost focus on serving people. And that's what we're mm-hmm. here to do. Mm-hmm. Great. Thanks, Brian. Don, do you have any thoughts on that of just how we can encourage each other to be unified? I I think we have to start with us and our community and hopefully that then spreads to others. And Mm -hmm. part of that is we need to understand each other's roles in in our system. Mm -hmm. I have my own opinions as as Don, the the husband and the father, but my role doesn't necessarily let me share those opinions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have to understand, you know, the faith-based organization's roles. I, Andy Nevis is the one that asks this. I have to understand the Taxpayers Association, their role, and not personalize it. Because hmm. I believe, I really believe in our county, everyone wants the same, the same thing, how you get there how you fund it or whatever it is, those are the challenges. But if we can get to the point where we understand each other's roles and perspectives, and it's about relationships, then we can have very difficult conversations where we may disagree and debate, but we walk out still being willing to have those conversations in the future versus isolating people who have different views. Yeah. Yeah, And seek to understand and be respectful. Yeah. Yeah, really, you know, it can really become just basically a character issue on our part, right? Of and also because people are impassioned and they and 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 they care, and we should because these are really important and in, in, um, things. Um, and in the midst of that, how do we be respectful towards one another and and speak in respectful ways? I think is is huge. It's critical. Uh, so obviously, you know, I'm a pastor, so the, the church thing is pretty, you know, pretty central into my thinking and what I'm doing. I'd shared with both of you before we started, I talked with a pastor today who is up in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, and um, they've been told that they're not going to be allowed to have any groups um, until they reach herd immunity or a vaccine is um, developed. So he, he as a pastor is saying, we're not going to have church services for 12 to 18 months. And we're not at that point. Um, and I know within the, the uh, governor's sort of four phases, essentially churches come into phase three where there might be the opportunity for churches. But uh, Brian asked the question, uh, Brian at uh, Long uh, Pastor of Foothills Church. Hey, Brian, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, our leaders are attempting to discern timeline for reopening. What is the county's position on church opening according to the Pacific Justice Institute's checklist for opening ahead of the governor's mandates uh, safely and sanely? Um, has Diagostini come out with any official stance on enforcing the current mandates? <laughs> wow, Brian, why don't you just dive right into the heart of the uh, thing there? Way to go in details. Anybody want to wade into that into, into that one? Thanks, Brian. I do appreciate you. Well, Don, Don's probably got more of the details with what they're trying to work on for information for us tomorrow, David. But you know, it's, uh, the governor led with it today, and he he said we're going to come in and we're going to fine or we're going to cite or we're going to pull licenses for those that are not fulfilling what we order. Um, that sort of stated it up front. Yeah, um, I think there's ways to do lots of things, and again, social distancing and some of the other practices can go a long ways. Um, and 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 as I told you earlier, there's also people that believe that you know the major spread of this could be some other reasons or other factions that we're not even attempting to to go after. So. It's, it's a challenge I worry about, again, our people and, and their ability to socialize and, and religious services, churches and so forth are so critical to, um, uh, you know, this country uh, from, from me as a person, as well as what I can do as a supervisor, I'll be push, pushing so we can get people back together. Mm-hmm. Um, but re- remember, and Don's going to hit it next is 
the state and the governor control all the purse strings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for me, this, I'm glad I talked about roles before I have to answer this question. <laughs> is in the role as a CAO, my response is the governor has clearly stated that's in phase three. And there are absolutely zero conversations going on with the health officials and the state about when we'll get to phase three and what that will look like. Hmm. Um, hmm. They, there are some that are advocating, and I, I, I'll suggest this, advocate to the governor to move churches to phase two. You have some compelling arguments to that. There's people gathering in other places such as parks, um, Walmarts and things like that. Why can't you, why can't a church congregate? Mm -hmm. Or um, has D'Agostini come out with an official stance on enforcing the current mandates? Yes, and I've spoken to both him and the DA and they said I could speak for them on this. The, the, way the, the way the law is written is the health officers and the state department of public health can issue these orders but the sheriff and the DA, it says they may enforce. They don't have to enforce. Our sheriff and our DA, our sheriff has said he's not enforcing and our DA has said, even if someone did, he's not prosecuting. Mm -hmm. I feel strongly about that. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean though, that the state can't come in and do their own enforcement things or pull licenses and things like that. So, mm -hmm. and that's something we don't have any control over. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I appreciate um, I appreciate the official stance <laughs> and the role, you know, coming through there, and, and Brian, the heart there as well, and um, and, and I think we've seen some of the what has happened from you know the governor's office when you know people started going to beaches and you know things you know were just immediately shut off um, of where sort of that power you know the power move can come in there, um, so that. Um, that there's a little bit of precedent about what might um, happen or what might be expected within that. Um, so um, Dustin um, Haley, he asks, and he, um, he's one of our principals of our schools. Um, how do you see schools reopening to serve the community? Do you have any, I know you, you said that there really haven't been conversations but um, about phase three or phase four, but um, surely, you know, there's, there have been conversations about what is, what are we going to do on the school side of things, which affects huge, I mean, so many people in so many ways. Any thoughts um, or reflections that would be helpful for us on that? Yeah, Don, you've got the, I think this update probably from the school. I mean, there's a, there's a group obviously through the county also had this meeting and discussing this all the time and they've got target dates. It was funny is the, they, knew nothing of what the governor talked about what last last week about those his target dates <laughs> actually the superintendent of the state schools didn't know anything about it <laughs> so i think our local people are talking and planning and uh don if you want to take it from there go ahead well i'll just add what's interesting in the governor's roadmap that he issued yesterday or, or today i believe my, he has a section of modified school programs and child care reopening in phase two hmm. so what does that look like? And I, I don't know. The conversations I've had with our superintendent is they're, they're still trying to figure all that out. They, what Supervisor Veerkamp referenced last week, the governor said schools are opening in July and that was not, that caught everyone off guard. <laughs> right. Even the yeah. state superintendent and it just was not possible. So our schools are planning to open in August, but that's, that's what I know, and I'm, I don't know how they're, I have no idea how you could maintain, maintain social distancing with a bunch of third graders in, in a classroom. I right. yeah. don't know. And that's, that's, as we've talked about with the, even the church, you know, side of things, you can tell, and you can create some context for social distancing with adults, but, you know, kids... They, they miss their friends. They're going to go hug them, right? Um, they're going to play together. Um, you know, junior hires and, you know, their boys are fighting with each other and wrestling with each other and girls are crying on each other and hugging each other and happy to see each other. And, um, you know, it's just, it, yeah, it does create a lot of, a lot of challenges there and, and how you do that 
and my wife is a teacher, seventh grade teacher. So um, that's a reality for us um, within, within our home. So, yeah. Well, that's the, the piece that's hard to turn on is David. They talk about herd immunity out of the, you know, the church up in British Columbia. How do you get to herd immunity if you keep everybody separate? Right. Yeah. Anyway. Right. Yeah. So I think, you know, one of the things is, as uh, we were interacting a little bit before, Don, you'd, you'd said, because um, I'd sort of asked, you know, what are, what are the top three, you know, sort of points? And one of the things you said is don't react. Um, so why don't you unpack that a little bit? Uh, what do you, what do you mean by don't react? Because we're, you know, we're talking about some of these things that are happening right now in the communication. Yeah, you're, you're going to hear things on, whether it's on social media or information straight from the governor's office or information from the county that you don't like and don't react to that. Do your research to make sure what you were told is accurate because there's so much misinformation out there. And I won't, I won't even touch on the misinformation I, that I think some people do intentionally. Uh -huh. I'm just saying misinformation because it's so confusing and so hard to understand. Hmm. And just be patient, take the time to find out what the truth is. Mm -hmm. that, may that may take some effort going to the governor's website or, or calling the county. You can, call, you can call me. That's why you have your elected board members to call them. They'll help get the answers. Um, but also be patient with us because we may not know the answer right away. We may have to research it too. Um, yeah. so that's kind of what I mean. I think too many, and I do it too. I see something on social media and I just get mad. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong. That's easy to do. And that's easy to do. have to take a breath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I think, you know, it's such a moving target that things are so different and things are changing constantly. Uh, it really can, it, and, and I think the other thing, we've talked about this in some of our other conversations, everybody's stressed out. You know, we, don't, we don't realize how, I, I, I describe it as, is that there's this low level of electrical charge that's running through our lives, right? That we've are started getting used to the fact that it's there, but we forget sometimes that that's having an impact. And that's that stress of, you know, I want to go to Home Depot and they close at six o'clock and, and then I have to wait in a line for a half an hour. You know, what's up with that? What's up with that? Or I want to go and grab something at the grocery store and it's not on the shelf. And all of these things that have shifted in our reality that we are not used to, they cause, you know, they irritate us. And that that's a stress that um, and and both of you. Um, Don and Brian, you know, you said it's part of, you know, a top three is to be patient and kind, um, you know, that idea of patience and, and kindness um, is so, so important. And I think, you know, also, one of the things that I've learned in leadership is this, is, is that people who are in leadership over me know more than I do. They have more information. Um, and they're making decisions the best that they can based upon the information that they have. Um, I don't know, always like that because I frankly think that I know most of anything. <laughs> ask my wife and my kids, uh, particularly ask my staff. They'll tell you that as well. Um, so, um, but as I look at you guys, I mean, I know that you have more information than I do that you're trying to make decisions from the board of supervisors, you know, you're trying to distill that information and make good decisions. Um, and, and I appreciate that. So that, you know, is important to stay patient with, with people within that. Can I add on that, David? Yeah. I just want to, you know, we're a year from now, 18 months from now, we're going to look back and look at all the decisions that were made. And my hope is that we all remember the environment we had to make those decisions. Mm. They're being made very quickly mm. uh, because it's demanded of us, not in, quite frankly, in horrible circumstances. And some of those decisions we're making now are to be wrong. We're gonna look back and say that was, that was not a good decision. Mm. And hopefully as a community, we can all recognize everyone did the best they could in the environment they were in mm -hmm. and there was no 
intention to make a bad decision. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was just a, a really hard time. Yeah. And, and then let's, let's fix it and move on as a community when we mm -hmm. figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, for both of you, um, both of you are men of faith and you, and Don, you talked about the roles that you have and you have to understand what your role is and how you live and speak in the role that you are in. And that's not being double personality or double-minded or anything. It's just sort of recognizing it's having the wisdom to live your life well. But I know for both of you, you're both men of integrity, of character, um, people on the board, you know, people on the, the, the that I know and have met within County, nobody's perfect, but, um, I appreciate that, you know, character that you have and integrity that you are seeking to, you know, lead out of, um, out of your personal character, integrity, your faith is, a, is very much a part of that. Um, and that's, what, an, that's David, I think an important trait too, is just be humble. I mean, we try to build the, the, the uh, decision based on factual findings. I mean, that's one mm -hmm. of the biggest things I've learned on being on boards and, then relying on the best information we have at the time to mm. make a decision that, that may not fit everybody, but it, it, you know, sort of like triage does the best for the most. Yeah. And, and, and it'd be humble because guess what? Uh, you're going to be wrong sometimes. And that's, mm -hmm. it's just the way it goes. And, and we'll talk about this tonight and probably new information tomorrow. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it's an ever changing, not only the COVID situation, but life. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, you think you got it all figured out. Uh, God has a very good way of making, making his laugh or making, making him laugh. You want a good yeah. laugh, tell God your plans, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Michael, uh, Mad Mike, uh, Michael Davis, um, he has a good question that's very relevant to us as a county. He says, considering El Dorado County is a destination for many, what plans or procedures uh, do you have or are planning to have for vetting travelers from heavily populated, populated areas where more COVID-19 cases are present? You know, so that is one of the challenges we have, right? It's like, well, we, we, we sort of, you know, most people who live in Cal El Dorado County sort of already live the shelter in place lifestyle. <laughs> it's like, you know, we want social distancing. We moved here to get away from people. Um, but um, you have a lot of people who come from uh, the Bay Area, Sacramento, um, that are more heavily populated, you know, sort of maybe higher risk. Um, how, do, how are you balancing that sort of tension Go ahead, Don. <laughs> um, you know, what, what we're doing now, and so that our health officer let her stay at home directive expire um, mm -hmm. under the governor's, but she kept her travel prohibition to Tahoe in place. Mm. That, that was based on the guidance from primarily between her and Barton Hospital, because they're, they're very concerned that with an influx of visitors, they, they won't be able to handle the capacity. You know, we've had, you know, there's, there's been conversations of putting a, a roadblock at the top of Echo Summit to, and checking, checking IDs. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, well, you are doing road construction where you're shutting down the road. So, I mean, that's sort of pretty yeah. effective <laughs> that, um, you know, that's pretty good timing to sort of slow things down a little bit, but um, on Highway 50. You know, in talking to the health officer in the hospitals, and, and this gets into a very sensitive subject, but the, the, the benefit of face coverings. Hmm. And so right now, there is no such directive or guideline or order of that in El Dorado County. Our health officer doesn't believe we have the numbers to warrant that. Mm -hmm. and, but there has been conversation of when the stay-at-home orders are lifted and we start seeing a, more, a larger influx of people from the more urban areas, she will probably put out a guideline suggesting people wear face masks just because we're going to have so many people in our community that we don't know and we don't know. Them. Yeah. 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 That, that one's definitely seems to be, you know, one that will be coming down the pipe of that, um, that directive or recommendation um, happening. So um, I think too, David, you know, we as locals know where we can go and where we can't go and pick your spots. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. uh, we are not going to restrict the tourism that 
enjoys El Dorado County. I mean, go with Crystal Basin last weekend. I had lots of reports. There were campers everywhere, not in the forest because they're not open, mm -hmm. but everywhere else. Mm -hmm. We've had people. We've had people obviously over by the river on on uh, Cronin Ranch area, and and through Don's hard work and discussions, we were thank God we were able to get the parking lots back open because they're parking on the roadway and walking across Highway 49. Yeah. So. You're Thank not, you, by the way. My wife thanks you greatly, Don, yeah. for uh, doing that. So somebody's, you know, somebody's going to get killed, and, and my dog. Do you kill many people that way versus what the coronavirus <laughs> isn't doing? I mean, so there's some things that just got to have some common right. sense. And you're not going to restrict folks from from traveling to that degree. And and we're we're doing what we can to limit it. Mm -hmm. But remember, if the state governor's order is they should be restricted from leaving their their house to that degree in, yeah. in those in those highly populated areas so yeah anyway where it ends up i don't know but we we, we that is definitely high on our list of, of mm -hmm. worrying about right because we our people have done a great job in in keeping saying at bay and yeah and yeah. so yeah so we'll we'll throw this one in here. Katie May asked us uh, just a very you know simple question. So what are your feelings on businesses that are choosing or have chosen to open now? <laughs> I'm, I'm I help it, you know, throw that part again. I'll let the supervisor handle that. <laughs> there you go. He passed one off to you, Don. So it is only fair that you can pass one back to you. Know. You know that's fine. You know I get, I'll answer this two ways. Personally. Um, People got to make a living, David. The the gal in uh, Texas that has been put in jail over this whole thing is absolutely ridiculous, and that's over a judge just wants her to apologize for what she did. Mm -hmm. who, who's a judge to ask for that? She's trying to feed her family. Mm -hmm. These people need to feed their families, and we're talking mom and pop businesses here. Um, and I certainly get those that are concerned, but that person, any person, has a choice not to go to that restaurant. And, and be a, be a part of it if they think that yeah. might be spreading this. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, and I'm telling you, Don will, Don will say the same thing. The fallout from this economically is going to be huge. Yeah. You know, they're talking $54 billion deficit. I, I don't even know if that's going to touch it when we're all said and done for yeah. all of the potential lost wages and revenues and businesses yeah. lost and so forth. And, uh, you know, there's, there's going to, I think there's going to be some more tough choices as we, we move ahead. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I think people need, they can make that choice. And it's like, it's like wearing a mask as well. If, if places require masks and you don't want to wear it, don't go stay home. If you're yeah. sick, stay home. So pretty simple. Yeah. Rule. Right. I mean, that question in that situation, I think, just really does crystallize the tension that we face as a community, right, of people's livelihoods, people trying to survive, trying to make the best decision. And, you know, that um, and it's hard. It's not it's we want easy. We want black and white. We want it just, you know, this or that. And that's um, that we're in very very difficult very very challenging times when it comes to all of that um so um you know as we as we end up here we're coming to the end of our time um just sort of my you know my, i guess my closing question is what is the one thing that you would hope or you would want people to come away with out of this conversation there's people who are listening to it now it'll be on facebook you know people will log in later what is it that you would want um, people to remember or know out of our time together? You know, I'll start. I, I think, again, it goes back to just have a factual understanding of, of what the situation may be. Again, putting, try to put themselves in our place and decisions we're trying to make. And uh, it, uh, it, as with anything, it's fairly complicated. And this is even more complicated. But, uh, you know, we're here to uh, love and honor the fellow man, fellow person. Remember that and have patience and we'll, we'll get through this. There may be a lot more to it than we know today. Mm -hmm. um, and we just have to be faithful and continue that uh, we're doing the right thing. I think uh, from the county's perspective, the city of Placerville, 
City of South Lake Tahoe, our law enforcement agencies, everybody is trying to do the right thing. The Emergency Operations Center, you know, their their meetings, there's numerous work groups. A lot is a lot is going on to try to do the right thing and make the right decisions with not overburdening and yet not underburdening. So mm. it's a tough one. I, I think we're doing it fairly darn well and appreciate the patience, but the factual understanding of the situ of the situation will help. Um, thanks. Thanks, Brian. Don, would you? Yeah, I would please remember that as, as county government, we are required to follow the laws of the state, whether we like them or not. That, that's what we have to do. And from, your, from the faith-based perspective, or for quite frank, from anyone's perspective in the public, don't be afraid to advocate for what you believe in. Hmm. That's that's how our system works. I often say government decisions are messy and mm. that's by design. It could be, we could be very efficient and make really quick decisions if we didn't listen to what our community had to say. Mm. Sometimes the advocacy makes my job harder, but mm -hmm. guess what? that's what I signed up for. And that's what an elected supervisor signed up for. Mm. Don't stop that advocating, do it in a, a kind way, a respectful way. Um, and sometimes you'll get what you want and sometimes you won't. Mm. But, but also know that, especially in this county, and I came from LA, especially in this county, the board listens to the advocates. Mm. They, they have to, at some point they have to make a decision. And sometimes that decision is three, two on the board. Sometimes it's five, zero. Mm -hmm. But they, every single one of the board members, they listen to the advocates, they listen to the arguments. I would love it if the board would agree with every recommendation I made, but I'm not in touch with the community as much as they are. And mm -hmm. don't, don't just continue doing that mm -hmm. for, for what you believe in. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate, you know, both of those, you know, comments and perspectives of, um, I think we, we are very blessed in where we live. Um, and, that in the midst of this and the challenges um, that it is an important thing to remember that, that there is a lot of blessing um, in that we have, you know, uh, Brian is you, you know, you're a lifelong resident, your, your commitment to serving on the board and serving in the community is not, um, as you said, about as much about you as it's about you love this community and you have those deep roots into it. And Don, um, you know, I know that your commitment to the community and it's just as, just as deep. And, and, um, you know, Katie, I think may, she said, you know, just want to say thank you. And you were doing an incredible job. We are proud to live in El Dorado County. Um, that, uh, that's, uh, definitely a sentiment that I want to, um, come away with and encourage you with. And, and, um, you know, the scripture tells us that we're to, you know, pray for, you know, our government authorities, um, to honor them, to respect them. And, and I think in the midst of this, um, that that's what we want to do. And, and that was part of, you know, hope in our conversation as well is just to hear, um, from you and hear your hearts as well as, um, the details of what it looks like to move forward. And, but there's a lot of work. <laughs> there's a lot of work in that. Um, if you're listening to this uh, conversation, either now live or later, that you would you would commit to being in prayer for our board of supervisors, uh, particularly for Don, and think as the chief administrative officer of his responsibility, sort of over everything. Um, our sheriff, um, those who are in authority, um, we you guys just really need great wisdom and. Um, I get the opportunity to pray for you um, at Board of Supervisors meetings. I always appreciate that. I know that that's a choice, that that's not a right um, necessarily, that you have made that available for different faith leaders to do that. And um, I, I appreciate that you allow that voice to be a part of um, part of our conversation in the county. So, so um, let me pray for us as we end today. And um, I want to pray for uh, Don and Brian and the, those who are in authority. And um, so would you pray with me? Um, Jesus, thank you for Don and his family. Thank you for the time and the energy, the sacrifices that they are making in order to serve our community, to serve us, um, to serve our county. 
Uh, thank you for Brian and for Lori for their dedication and devotion to our community and to our county and the work that they put in to make us better. Um, Lord, we know that um, uh, our board of supervisors, those who work in the different departments and our public servants and those who are leading us in our law enforcement, both countywide and within our communities of um, Placerville and South Lake Tahoe, that, um, that they're having to make hard decisions. And we just pray that you would give wisdom to each and every one of them, uh, that you would give them much grace. And for our hospitals and our health officials um, on the county level and our hospitals in Marshall and Barton, Lord, we thank you for their dedication and devotion for the nurses that are on the front lines and the support staff. Um, we pray for your protection over them. And for our county, we do pray that you would protect us and that you would um, bless us, that you would give our governor wisdom, that you would put wise people in his path who know you, who love you, and would speak truth into his life and in his decisions. And, that, um, and we pray for our nation and our world, Lord, that we would come out of this stronger. We don't know how that's going to look, um, but we pray that you would be in the midst of us and you would help us as people of faith to be a part of the people of hope. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Don and Brian, thank you so much um, for taking time out of your busy lives. Um, I so appreciate it. And um, I want to say something about beating you guys in golf, but I know that that is not realistic at all. Uh, and hunting, you know, but then Brian, you're going to say something back that is probably going to embarrass me. So since I control whether the meeting ends or not, you know, I probably just going to end the meeting before things just get totally out of control. So uh, David, from, from the board of supervisors and the County, we thank you so much. We thank you for all of the, uh, unselfish invocations and the time it takes for you to do that as well. And, uh, they're very, always very special. And we, we were so blessed to have you doing that besides the golf and the hunting and other stuff. So, <laughs> and your leadership with, with the church and congregation and so forth and the community. So. Uh, well, well, thank you. It's, it is a privilege. I mean, this is a great community. Uh, our family loves it so much. And so, and you guys are, you know, making it um, as wonderful as it is. And we appreciate that. So, yeah. all right. Well, thank you. well have Thanks a yeah, Thank you, David. have a good night, and uh, and we'll be praying for you, Don, as you and, and board of supervisors, as you have to make a bunch of decisions tomorrow in your special meeting. So, all Thank right. you. blessings to you. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.